Hey everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with KillerSites.com and this is my very first video blog at the news pad. I haven't had a chance to put up any wall art on the, uh, on the walls, but um, anyway. So in this video blog, I'm actually going to be responding to a question that was put to me and they were asking about my big server move. So, let me give you a bit of background story. Uh, essentially, uh, I transferred, we rather, transferred uh, the killer sites network of sites from one dedicated server to another. And so what does that mean? That means that we have a box, a physical box, computer box, that we uh, rent from a big provider and we basically own the box and we host our sites on the box. And the reason we have a dedicated server rather, you know, rather than shared hosting is because, well, a couple of things. Number one, we have a lot of uh, traffic on the Killer Sites Network, millions of page views every month. And beyond that, we also have some very specific requirements in terms of our hosting. Uh, essentially, it's our Java-based stuff. Now, some of you may or may not know, my big thing was Java. So I, back in the day, uh, I put into place some Java-specific um, uh, technology, Java-based sites and stuff, Spe specifically our old Java form. And um, so we don't use it anymore for active uh, forum participation, uh, but we do keep it up there as an archive because there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of posts and you know, people still refer to it. So we keep it up, but the problem is that uh, Java you know, has its many advantages, but it's one big disadvantage for me anyway is that if you're going live with it, you know, to serve up uh, Java-based dynamic pages, whether it be JSPs or Java server phases or whatnot, um, it requires a, a lot of juice. And uh, what, do we mean, what do I mean by a lot of juice? I mean a lot of uh, horsepower in terms of RAM, RAM memory, and so on. Uh, so you can do it with shared hosting, but it is problematic. There's also other issues where when, uh, you know, depending on how the server is configured, if you change things to the app, your Java-based app, you have to re restart the server sometimes. And it's, it's just a real pain in the neck versus uh, PHP or Ruby, I imagine. Um, anyhow, so we have some old Java-based stuff that we have to uh, keep going. So dedicated server. We have a lot of traffic, so dedicated server. Uh, when you're switching... Uh, from one server to another, because we're using a traditional server as opposed to a cloud-based system, which has huge advantages in terms of migration, with a cloud-based server, you can much more easily move your system from one physical box to the next. It's pretty simple. When you're going traditional like me, it's problematic. So it requires a bit more configuration and so on. Especially when you have old Java-based forms, you're going to move around. The, the configuration for that thing is just a nightmare. Um, anyway, so there you go. So that's the big server move. It took like a week or two to finalize everything. You know, it could have been done quicker, but there's all this planning that has to be done, and you know, because we have lots of databases to move across, and you know, we even had trouble this time because we're moving from one version of Apache on the old server versus a new version of Apache, which uh, in the new version of Apache, they're much more restrictive in terms of uh, uh, folder permissions and it, it, that it caused all kinds of problems where we had to go in there and change permissions on all the folders. Otherwise, the server would just would fail. We get these uh, 500 error, Apache errors. Um, it was just a real pain in the butt. Another thing, you know, you may have to contend with, and this was new for me because it's never happened before, is with the old Apache server, um, PHP was was configured with Apache in this thing, uh, thing called, I think it's mod JK, I forget off the top of my head. Essentially, it was a module that worked with an Apache, and that's how it's been working for years, but they changed it to a, some sort of CGI-based CGI system for security reasons, again, 
And so it, again, that screwed up um, some of our stuff. Uh, not major, but again, it had to do with HD access. It didn't work, you know, when you're using HD access uh, to route non-PHP pages, like HTML pages, SHTML pages, we were using HD, HD access to tell Apache, treat them as PHP pages. So anytime an HTML page would be requested, we would send it to the PHP engine to, to process any PHP code that might be in there. And we just did that. Um, it's, it's a very unusual requirement, but we, why were we doing that? Because we had some really old legacy pages on killersites.com, and I just wanted to add in some dynamic footers and stuff like that, um, and keep the .html page, keep the URL, URL structure for Google purposes. Anyway, I won't bore you with that, but uh, so we had to change that up. So basically, when you're going from one server to the next, even though, uh, you're mindful of the configurations and so on. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna have some upgrade issues that you had not expected, that's for sure. Um, yes, I could have kept the exact same version of Apache on, on the new server that I had on the old and so on, but it's always better, uh, as, far as, as far as I'm concerned, to incrementally keep up with the changes in technology Otherwise, you might find yourself five, six years behind, which it's a real nightmare to upgrade when you finally are pushed to do it. So there you go. Uh, that was the big server move. It took up uh, a lot of time, slowed down everything, and uh, but it's done finally. And I think, uh, well, I know you're going to see a much greater speed increase uh, when you load up any of the killer sites, whether it be killersites.com, killerphp.com, uh, you know, the killer video store.com, etc. So that's it. Um, this is the first of many new vlogs in the new uh, location, and uh, I hope you found this somewhat informative. That's it. Oh, you know what? Uh, another reason uh, I got the dedicated servers. I now let me point out something. I used to have my own servers right right in my place and when you have your own servers you have to get a, a line coming in which can be expensive and you know internet connection and you also need to get the hardware you got to maintain the hardware you got to watch over the hardware if something breaks you got to go there and fix it you better have some spare pieces ready and um, you got to have backup batteries you know just in case the power goes out Typically, you got to have 24 hours of backup battery, uh, so it can get very expensive in terms of your hardware configurations. So what I did, I guess seven, eight years ago, I forget now, maybe six, seven years ago, I decided to basically co-locate a server at a dedicated uh, host company, hosting company. Now, they do, they do commercial stuff, meaning where you could bring your server computer into their location, one of their locations, and they'll just plug it into their network. Uh, what's a better solution though is to just rent a box from them. That's what we do. And the reason it's a better solution is because then they become responsible for the hardware and its maintenance and so forth. So the advantage of using an outside dedicated host hosting provider is that you got the 24-7 support. They uh, monitor and, and their, their, their systems and their hardware they're gonna have much bigger bandwidth bigger pipes than you so you can they can handle spikes in traffic much more easily and uh, what else is there well that's 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 the big ones right there so you know if you find your sites are really taking up a lot of bandwidth and you need uh, uh, a lot of horsepower and you need uh, you know those those extra that extra flexibility that a, your own dedicated box provides, then it's something to look into. I should point out though that um, there is an extra cost to that. When you go from uh, shared hosting to dedicated box, you go in from you know you know maybe tens of dollars a month or ten bucks a month to many hundreds depending on your configuration. And you know where they really ding you is like on things like RAM and um, disk space. If you have like a server with two two gigs of RAM, 
four gigs of RAM is not going to cost you so much, but if you want to go to eight, we have eight, they really up the price. If you want to go from a 500 gig hard drive to a terabyte, they up the price, if, you know, big time. There's these, there's these sweet spots, just like cars, there's these sweet spots in server configurations where you get a lot of bang for your buck, but, uh, you know, it may, you may need to push it up a little higher, and that's what we have to do, unfortunately. Uh, so it costs us a little bit more. But again, it's totally worth it. And uh, I would advise hosting in your own apartment or your own place, unless you want to get into the hosting business because the whole can of worms, that, uh, that will take up a lot of time. Now that's the end of the video.